few days to kind of look over the team, how would you assess them? Well, you know, days I, I always, I always try to get better every day. You know, I think, you know, as far as offensive, defense wise, and still working on special team stuff, and you see a lot of progressing and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, each and every position is doing, doing a little better every day. If they can continue to do that, I think we're going to be a whole lot better ball player. Now, the sun's not out as much this early in the morning, but I can tell towards the end of practice, a lot of energy, uh, guys that want to quit and, and things of nature. Going into this season, sometimes when you when you put on those pads, you kind of kids uh, tend to give in just somewhat. But just the, the motivation between the, the biggest thing, the biggest thing we always tell the kids, you know, hold each other accountable for you get things. So I think if they continue to do that, push each other every day, and try to get better every day. You know, if they, that's the thing is going to overcome all this stuff, the the, 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 the tiredness and, and the weakness and all that kind of stuff. As long as they pull each other and holding that chain link tight, you know, I think they're going to be a whole lot better. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, Lenore. Is there a reason why he was uh, out today, or is it just kind of just kind of? No, just precautionary reason. I mean, it's no 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 definite reason. I mean, if Lenore, you know, he does. He just gives a chance to get the younger guys, you know, and just kind of feel out where they at and what he's going to need a backup. So we got to kind of find that depth in that quarterback position and stuff. So um, you know, we continue to push and press against that kind of stuff. And I think we're going to be a lot better at that position. Now the experience that he got last year with those six games that he was able to start, obviously it has to pay huge dividends in, in terms of this upcoming season uh, when it, you know when, when Gibbs went down. But that connection, can you talk a little bit about that Marquise Warford, uh, Lenore's Footman connection there? They obviously have. Some. You know the biggest thing is now you know having it, having Footman to play those six games you know last season and, and getting the experience, more experience, game time experience, especially you know um, practice wise, you have to get him in when you can. But that game experience is what really counts, and, and you know as far as Footman and uh, Warford connection. I think it's going to be a tangible thing where those guys are going to do a lot of things good together. You know, I think he's going to understand. You know, get the ball in his hand when, when everything else fails. You know, make sure we do that. And uh, if we do that, we'll be consistent on a consistent basis. I think it, it, uh, that connection will be a, a whole lot better. So. What stands out to you personnel wise with this particular group here? You know, the biggest thing is you know you got you got depth on the defensive line and, and the linebacker core and uh, on the defense side of the ball. You know. Uh, we got that, and then you look on the offensive side of the ball, our offensive line got a lot of experience, and, uh, and it's a place of the receiver core. You know, we got a lot of, a lot of juniors and sophomores at that receiver core, so you, 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 you tend to look at that and, and say you're going to be great uh, in the passing game and stuff like that. So we're looking forward to this season. Any players in particular that you've noticed the last couple of days that kind of stood out that, that maybe didn't make a name for themselves? Last well, I try, to, I try to notice them all. I just can't, can't get a notice on them all, but uh, you know, some of the guys that, that's going to step up at the linebacker core, like Michael Hearn, and it's going to be a big dividend on the defensive side of the ball. And, and on the offensive side of the ball, you know, you got Antonio Day, you know, the preseason All American that's going to move into the center spot and, and looking pretty good right now. So uh, we keep working on that kind of stuff and working on guys over position. I think we'll be, we'll be a great football team. Last question for you Anthony Williams, Warren Gate Wood. Uh, two key contributors last year. They're they're now gone. That defensive back deal. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Well, you know, Coach Thomas has done a great job over the years, man, with those guys in the secondary. And I don't doubt no. I don't have any question about what he's gonna do with them this year. So I think he's gonna do a tremendous job of bringing those guys up to play like last year and feel old, and feel old position like that. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, you know, Coach Thomas going. He's a great defensive coordinator. Uh, they're gonna do a great lot of things in the secondary. So I'm looking forward to seeing everything when it when it all when it all come out. Here, so. That's what we're going to do. Awesome. Okay. Um, overall, with a lot of continuity, um, we're ahead of the curve. Um, but that, that helps having kids in summer school and coming back with a, with a lot of returning kids. Um, not from the star lineup, per se, but just the kids that have been in the program. Um, so that really helps. So I say we're above you know, the curve as far as the, um, the aspect of knowing the coverage concepts and, and football concepts. We still got to get in shape. We still got a long way to go. Right. Now, as far as that transition, it, would it, was it somewhat natural for you moving from Coaching the defensive backs and, and knowing that unit, and did a heck of a job last year with those guys, Warren Gatewood and Anthony Williams. But making that move to defensive coordinator, did it make it easier in terms of, uh, I guess, knowing those kids and knowing what their strengths and weaknesses are? Oh, without a doubt. But well, basically, the junior college um, sector really helped me the most because I had a chance to coordinate at Mississippi Delta. But here, being on the back end, everything is tied in to, to me as far as being a final product. So I was always in the meeting and always. Um, knowing where the fits were, so the transition has really been even, um, especially with kids that's returning up front um, on the front seven. So, hey, we're just plugging in new pieces, but the transition has been really easy for me, leaning on some of the great coaching staff that I have with my linebacker coach, Coach Thornton, and Coach Kyle Stewart. So, everything right now is going on uh, way ahead of, of what we expect. Nice. Now, we're, we talk about Gate Wood and, and, and Williams in that defensive backfield. Um, when I was at that Swag Championship game, and Gate Wood 
put on a show, basically. But replacing those guys, are there some guys in particular that kind of uh, standing out here the first couple of days of camp that you can feel like you know kind of step into that role? Yeah, um, Dan. Um, Dan is doing a good job. Um, Dan, you know, he started the first five games for us, and, and he tore his ACL. Daniel Franklin, um, but he's starting to come in. Um, you know, come in top form. Uh, Nick Brown played a lot for us last year. He's a local kid. You know, he's had a couple of picks in these, you know, first uh, two or three days and some, some nice times. He's doing well. Eric Foster started every game. He's holding us down. DeAndre Smith, he's doing an awesome job. Um, the transfer we got at midterm from South Carolina, uh, Via Northeast, Brady Smith, uh, Quinn Smith. So those guys are coming in. It's just reps. You know, those, a lot of those guys was on the team. They didn't get a lot of plays. Uh, in the secondary per se, but they was on the kicking game, which kind of grew them up. And they've been out there in front of 60,000. So um, from the film room, to out on the field and repetition wise, we'll get them up the bar. Nine. Now going every day against an expl some explosive players like, you know, Foot, Lenore's Footman and, and Marquise Warford and things of that nature. I, I guess that obviously has to help your, your defensive unit, uh, some of the most explosive athletes in the swag. Oh, without a doubt. The biggest thing is just keeping uh, keeping the mental calm because uh, it's a lot of big plays happening. Uh -huh. But those are big-time athletes. Uh, but it really helps us. It makes it so much easier, even from last year. And even when Foot was on scout team, you know, he went against the Gate Woods and, and, and Ant Williams, and that really helped us uh, be a whole lot better. But going against Coach Kaisi, a genius, you know, offensively, I know a lot of football. And to go against Foot and go against Charles Hughes and, and – and those guys, it's just really good for us because a lot of times in the game it just becomes um, secondary speed to us because we went against top-notch speed in practice, and those guys complete their tails off every day. I appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. For you guys, how will you kind of uh, assess the offense? I know uh, Footman's been down. You guys have a really good connection there, but just how would you assess the offense? Uh, as far as foot going down, uh, let's just hope that he's healthy. Uh, but as far as the foot going down, it helped us out a lot because we were still trying to figure out who's going to be that backup quarterback and who was going to come in and just step up when somebody went down. And uh, after the day, I think we kind of seen who, who can make plays for us when somebody goes down. All right. Now, explosive weapons. You guys have explosive weapons yourself. Uh, Lenore's brother, you know, he's a dual threat. He can run, he can pass. How does that make you uh, in a more, uh, I guess, dangerous team in terms of swag or in, in general? Shoot, I mean, regardless of who we play, they're going to have to either stop somebody on the offense. And, I mean, I ain't going to just say that one person can be contained because they can't because our offense just moves so many different ways. And, I mean, it's not going to be easy trying to stop any of us, especially 10. Now, you lose Darian Ragsdale. Are there a few guys that you kind of feel like in that backfield and kind of put, making a name for themselves here during camp? Uh, I always personally felt that we uh, had better backs last year, but it wasn't my call to make that judgment. Uh, but this year, I think the backs that uh, we have with Baker, uh, DeLance, Silas, I just think that our backfield is more dynamic now because we can just move so many people around. Now, with this being uh, yeah, what, year two for you, has Coach talked to you about expanding your role? I see they have you in the backfield, they have you at receivers, so I don't know you return to things of nature. Uh, just that expansion of your role. Uh, he, yeah, he had that talk with me because last year I made plays when it was my turn because I still rotated a lot. But this year, I mean, this year is the year. I mean, it started in the summertime, putting in the extra work, on and off the field. But now, I mean, this is the time where I have to step up and make plays, regardless of where I'm at. If it's just me being a decoy, touching the ball, I got to make plays where I'm at. Now this year you guys go from, well, yeah, I guess you were hunted uh, uh, last year, but you know when you moved, you went back to back swag championships. Uh, you're no longer kind of flying under the radar. You know people say you go from the hunted to, to hunter to to hunted. Uh, does that make things different for you guys? Does it change what you do in camp or? In Honestly, I don't feel we're the hunted right now because I feel that don't nobody respect us because of Coach Hop left, and uh, it, it, it's, it's frustrating as a player because as a head coach. You you don't you're not out there making any type of plays that we made last year, and for them to come at us uh, and not give us any type of respect from the second team to not giving us our credit from winning back to back championship, I promise everybody gonna have to feel us this year. Everybody's gonna have to. I mean, it just is we we put in too much work off the field and on the field and brotherhood. We all know that ain't nobody respecting us, and we just won back to back swag championships. So you we gonna have feel like you guys are gonna miss a beat. Oh, definitely not. I mean, I don't know. I don't think we're going to miss a beat at all. Coach Mack just comes in and helps us be more of an overall better team. He comes in, teaches us uh, different techniques, teaching us different learning methods. He makes us come closer as a team. It's all these stuff that uh, that everybody outside of the football team doesn't see that makes them feel that uh, maybe they can't win it again. But what they're sadly mistaken is we got too much talent for anybody to compete with us. What stands out about this team? And you obviously 
you played on last year's SWAG championship team, but before you got here, they won a SWAG championship. Right. But what's special about this particular group? It's, what's special about this group is everybody's young, and we're just all coming back another year. And it's just like that uh, anybody can make a play regardless of where we're at. And right now, last year we had receivers, but this year we got receivers that can make plays at any second. And it's going to for sure come down with the catch. And it just this team right here is something special because – we just a brotherhood. I mean, on and off the field, we're together 24-7, doing everything together. And, I mean, people don't see that. So, I mean, we're just going to have to make people respect us from now on. Thank you.